Hey there, Boots Owen here. This is my everyday toolbox. The one I use if I'm gonna repair something that isn't in the workshop and I need to grab a toolbox to go and do something. It's an old Draper Expert blue toolbox. What's it, about two foot long and a foot by a foot? Something like that. The clips are still intact, miraculously. The top handle folds in there to keep it flat. And it's got a little caddy inside, I'll show you in a second. This one, for me, at about 11, 12 stone, if I stand on the edges, it gives me a useful step up as well, even though I suspect it's not rated to do that. I have it maybe 20 years, and it's got to be getting up on 35 years old, 30 years old, that kind of age. It's a really good toolbox, and it has really, really lasted. Some of my tape there is wandering and has become a bit sticky. Started to slide off. The tape could also be 30 years old. Inside, I've got a various selection of things. Stanley knives, some spare parts like hinges, strip connectors, glue, which may or may not be fresh anymore. A small ratcheting screwdriver unit, which is useful for getting into small spaces. And other bits and bobs. So let's get into it. Take it apart, clean it, put it back together. We start with the caddy. The caddy has a top and a middle, or a top and a bottom. And I've got some cable ties in here, box spanners, a spare plug, protect your ears. So, let's just put it all back in. This is my torpedo, is it, or boat spirit level. It's a Stanley 42294. Bits of grout on it from setting tiles, but the top and the bottom faces I keep clean, and it's really useful. It's only a cheapy one, but I'm sure I got it at a car boot sale. Flexible screwdriver extension. That would be in the top, except it doesn't fit. Chainsaw file. Chain wrench. This is one of the most useful tools for taking off things that are strange sizes. You know, oil filters are what it's designed for, but if you want to take off anything else, parts of bicycles especially, steering heads on bicycles, it's your go-to. There's another one that needs a socket. I just keep it in here because it's handy. A flat file, or a flat and half round file. Typically, I'll use that fitting door locks and things like that. Small triangular file, again, quite handy to have in there. A plumb bob. I think this one's made by Marples in Sheffield. It's a really nice solid brass one with a steel tip and a brass top. An Eclipse Junior Hacksaw. I also like there's a backhoe style one that has a plastic grip that's easier to hold, but I like that one too, so it's in there. I like it so much, there's two of them. A draper, straight angled drawer lock. Well, I'd call it a drawer lock chisel, but it's a screwdriver, so it's like a drawer lock screwdriver, but a right angled screwdriver for getting into tight spaces. Stanley Bradall. Can't see the number on that anymore. 014, something 014. They're very handy, they're very cheap. A set from 8mm up to, what's that? 15mm of ring spanners, offset ring spanners. An old Phillips screwdriver that just is one one of my old ones. I think it's made by Kamasa. An old Kamasa one. Kamasa tools. The number one Phillips made in Japan. I think before Kamasa became crap, if you think they're crap nowadays. Spare plug. Mini vice grips made by Mole in Newport. Scratch all. This is very handy for pushing things 
into drywall or into gypsum wallboard if you're putting in screws or that and you want to make a start it's got a good ball handle and you're ready to go somewhat insulated screwdriver but it's got insulation on it but i wouldn't trust that for electricity and then a small unnamed it had a name on it unnamed flat screwdriver and you can see the ends are rounded over on this because when i'm doing things with engines and stuff i don't want to use the best screwdrivers engines and bicycles a small stubby phillips number two and some little bits here spare hacksaw blade there should really be some more of them in there we'll cover the electrician screwdrivers later a box spanner 16 by 17 and that one has been rung over so i'm going to take that out of this box spare piece of sleeving for earth when you're fitting a junction box or something a bicycle spoke with a hook on the end that's one of the handiest tools you'll ever have for getting a piece of wire into something or pulling something through there's one with a bigger hook some cable ties I don't really like cable ties but they have a time and a place so I've just got a small selection in here I normally keep a big bag of them as well I'll put those big ones back in the bag put the small ones back in this loop So this toolbox was the one I used to keep in the van when I had a van. There's a little Vera screwdriver and it should have a handle but the handle's missing and I don't know where it went or where it came from but it's a very handy one to have if you're doing electrical work because you know it's insulated but it's, it's small as well. So when I used to have the van, so when I used to have the van this one sat in the back of the van, now it sits in the car. Oh I spotted this guy here as well. It belongs in this set of metric allen keys, which I think came from Lidl many years ago. But 15 years ago, and it's still all there and still good. I think also from Lidl or Aldi, an adjustable spanner. A set of NWS electrician screwdriver... Or Electrician's needle nose pliers, very handy for doing electrical work. It might end up on the bottom. I'll put that in there. Another small flat screwdriver. Small Phillips number one or smaller electrical screwdriver. Another, this is a CK flat bladed screwdriver. And you can see what happens is they get used on bicycles and stuff with oily hands and then the oil gets on there. Work zone, this set, and the other ones down here from the set, they all came from Aldi or Lidl, wherever sells work zone. And I find them pretty good for what I'm at. I've not managed to wreck the tips on them yet, but I try to keep that set of electrician screwdrivers in this box for good, not to abuse them. In the top, in the top tote, Three Stanley knives. These are the ones I prefer. A 99E with a retractable blade. And what I typically have is a sharp one and then various stages down to completely dull for whatever I'm using them on. And I keep some spare blades in the handles. A fluke voltage detector. When it's flashing, if you put it near a cable with a, a voltage present, it'll beep. And it's just handy for doing work to test if something's live. But it's not really a test for voltage. It's just a kind of a first check. I bought this abroad. 
another angled screwdriver and another magnet on the remainder of a aerial that got broken two rolls of ptfe tape a set of dewalt screwdriver bits how do we open this These are peculiar ones because they have the square head, so I think they're for electricians, but uh, this is where they've wound up. They don't get used very often. Big hinge. Small Stanley tape measure with the label missing. Maybe it's a five meter one. Another plumb bob for some reason. I think it's just wound up in here. Some batteries, they should be taken out and recycled. The tail end of a roll of tape, that's gone. Let's get rid of that. Phillips angled screwdriver, some pens, some long tipped screwdrivers that go into drills and they're a bit chewed up those, those two. A nut breaker for up to, what would that be, maybe M8 nuts, 13 mil, and it's really handy, you just put it around the nut and then just tighten it up and it'll crack a nut open. For precision work. A stainless LSS Co. Starrett, six inch tape, six inch steel rule even, it's not a tape. Two big coach screws, I don't know why they're in there. A pencil and some pens. Another screwdriver. Draper made in Germany, and that's part of a set of three, I think. At least two of them are here. Six and seven mil Camasa spanner. That belongs in a set inside. It's going to go back in the house. Spare Stanley knife blade, probably used for cleaning glass. Lots of radiator keys and a shower hose washer. This box has had a bit of damage over time and it's been glued back together, but it didn't stay. Some odd screws and bits. Batteries, copper washers for doing the oil on the cars. Some nuts and bolts, a little tin of grease. Electrical screws. Some more screws in there. Glue, an eraser, more grease. An end cap for a 15 mil pipe, which is very handy when you're doing a job. Now there used to be a uh, there used to be a twenty five mil firmer chisel in here as well, which is missing. I've noticed. So let's get these things tidied back. I'll give this a quick vacuum out. Let's reassemble it then. Pens and pencils. Screwdrivers. The Walt guy can go there. Grease can go over there. Radiator keys on that washer. Plumb bob can go in there. Magnet. Tape measure. Breaker, star at rule. I think I'll keep them out. I've got a job for them. And some drywall plugs. And that big hinge. And the hinge actually should be out here now. The job that it was in for has happened. It hasn't happened, as a case may be. And voltage detector. That's that set up. I'd like another piece of insulating tape. I don't really like this one now. It's gone a bit tacky. So here's a little bit of 3M tape. It's handy. Put that in there. Cover that down. And let's get into the bottom. This axe was in here for a purpose and it's no longer needed in there, so it'll move out. A pair of Stanley through the handle screwdrivers. And these are the ones that I use to hit with a hammer. And despite that, the tips aren't too bad. That tip's a bit chewed over. But the Phillips, or the Posi number 2 is okay. It's a go-to Posi number 2 out of this box that I'll use. 
East Ring Hammer. I think I got that in America. It's not even broken in yet. It's still got a solid lacquer on it. It doesn't get much work for me, but it does get a bit. Spark plugs banner. A Nicholson farmer's file in a little corduroy corduroy sleeve that I made to protect it. Wire brush, needle nose, more cable ties. This guy is one of the first tools I got along with this one. I bought this one first when I was working on my first Honda, Honda 50, Honda C50 years ago. A Dargan 8 inch adjustable and a Dargan 12 inch adjustable. And they were the more affordable ones at the time. You can see I've managed to wreck the edges on that, but these have done a lot of work and I got every penny out of them. A made up set of Imperial Allen keys, because they sometimes you need a quarter inch instead of a six mil and that's what you need. It's a mixture of Viha, there's a Viha in there, and then other ones, there's a Swiss one. Doesn't say where it's made. Another tape measure, in this case, so this one's a five meter, so the other one's probably three and a half or four meters, that, that one over there. A five meter Stanley power lock. This one's been used quite a bit. You can see the edges are almost sharp on it. A basin wrench. An Appenel folding pruning wood saw. That's still really, really sharp. It unlocks or, un or it opens up and then you can lock the blade in position with the collar. That might need a drop of oil on it to keep it clean, but it hasn't rusted so far. Pull action, really good little saw. Nippers or pincers. A number two, posy. That one's not a great one. I'm not really sure why that's in here because the tip's getting a bit chewed up. Some more flat screwdrivers. These ones, the tips are in pretty good condition. Another kit stop and a fuller. Don't know those names really. Another spark plug wrench. I think it's probably a different size to the other one. A record 14 inch Stilson in quite good condition with the initials PIF. A guy called Fryman. I bought a load of tools off his son. Loads of really good tools, including a homemade table saw. Oh, lovely tool cabinet, loads of little Stanley planes and things like that. P.I. Fryman died and his son sold his tools because he wasn't going to use them. And that's the way it goes. Stanley. I should say, but I appreciate them. I still have loads of them knocking around. Stanley flat screwdriver, 2006, four inch. This one, this one, and this one. These are screwdrivers that I've had since I was a kid, basically. Maybe before I was a teenager. A number two Phillips that the tip's almost worn off, but I'll use it anyways. And a number, well, I don't know what that is, but a six inch flat bladed screwdriver and I really like them and they probably came out of a pound shop years ago but they're really handy. The very important big Stanley screwdriver with a flat blade. This is rarely used as a screwdriver. Normally it's used on things like getting the cylinder head off an engine or as a chisel or something like that for beating. You can see the colour of my finger after touching that. This one doesn't get much use but it's a number three Phillips screwdriver. The big one. A bicycle valve. I'm not even sure if that one works. I think it lives up there. And Nipex or Knipex. Knipex, it's Nipex in German. 03180. Filthy dirty electricians. Cutter universal pliers. Side cutters. Grips. Very handy again. And a big needle nose made by Amtec, which I'm sure I picked up at a car boot sale in a box of stuff for small beans. Slightly twisted tip there. It's a bit loose at the hinge, but uh, it's useful for getting into tight places. And a little CK number one Phillips. There's quite a few screwdrivers in here, and it looks almost as if the tip of that's bent, but I don't think it is. And a small nylon brush. And here, this is a ha very handy thing to have, a T-handled screwdriver bit screwdriver with a Phillips number two in it. Nope, a Posi number two in it. And this one is similar to a set of Draper screwdrivers that I have. 
but it's just not a Draper one. You can get a good purchase on this, you can get a lot of pressure behind it, and you can change the tips on it. So it's a really handy one to have, and I use that sometimes with my Britool uh, fastener set. It's a really cheap tool. <laughs> it's not even fancy. Some more sleeving, more cable ties, and I'll get the vacuum. I'd almost forgotten a vice grips, any old vice grips, because these get a lot of dog's work. That one's even quite worn. You can see it's pushed back through there, the hinge hole, and quite loose as well. It doesn't even have a brand name, so it's not even a fancy one. So let's build it up again. I'll put them back in the order they came out, because that tends to be the order things get used. I'm not a great believer... I'm not a great believer in having things in their place for stuff like this, because what happens is, the stuff you want is the stuff on the top. And the stuff you use most often. And this hatchet is a Stanley. Again, I think this came from Mr. Fryman, made in England, a sight master, Stanley sight master. And it's quite sharp, but it hasn't been sharpened in a while. And this was something that I think Mr. Fryman had made, a little leather cover, and in time the buckle came off, but that really doesn't matter to me. It works really well. Hand riveted, hand cut leather. So there you go. That's my toolbox. Let me know about yours. Thanks for watching. See you later.